This is the Inner the Buzz podcast, helping smart businesses be even more innovative. Hi, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and welcome to episode number 73 of the Innova Buzz podcast, where today we're going to explore information marketing in some greater detail. So this is the podcast for innovative business owners that want to elevate their level of innovation and want to get their marketing working much better for them. And today I'm going to talk to you about how information marketing, as I call it, might help you do that. Now it's been a really busy couple of weeks around the Easter break here at the Innova Buzz Hive. We've been busy planning for our Thailand business retreat in May and as part of that we've done a series of Facebook Live episodes. We called it Facebook Nine Lives, so metaphor a cat's nine lives. And the objective there was providing exceptional content related to what we're going to be working on with the fabulous businesses joining us on our Thailand business retreat. The focus has been on the five success principles of NLP and how they can be used across your business. So go check out those videos to find out more. Hopefully there's something of use to everyone there. What I did want to talk about today was we've had I've had several conversations this week around the importance of blogging, the importance of content marketing, or as I like to call it, information marketing. So I thought it would be good to dedicate today's podcast to that. So before I talk a little bit more about information marketing, let me tell you a story. So imagine you're at a networking meeting, Chamber of Commerce or whatever it might be. Imagine you're a business consultant who's gone to that networking meeting to drum up new business. Now you meet somebody, you introduce yourself, you have a discussion about what both parties do, you exchange business cards. Does that immediately lead to new business? Well, maybe sometimes it does, but more often than not, no, it's not. What's much more likely, that as long as there's something of clear and exceptional value there for the person you've just met, that there'll be some sort of follow-up. You might have a meeting to provide more information, to get to know more about each other, to further develop a relationship, and that may eventually lead to business. Okay, so that's the story. Now, why then do we expect our website, our online presence, to be any different? So people land on your website. Will they do business with you immediately when they first land there? Sometimes they might, but more often than not, no, they won't. It's exactly the same as the network meeting story. Now, if you're lucky, the business card situation will occur. So somebody might bookmark your website. They might even go to your contact page and get in touch. Better still, of course, would be giving them a way where they can give you their email in return for something that's exceptionally valuable to them. Something of clear and exceptional value to that visitor. So you get the picture there. There's a common theme between the story of the networking meeting in person and live and your website. Now, what about that follow-up meeting? How does that happen online? Well, this is where your blog comes in. So why should you be blogging? Well, first of all, a blog that's regularly updated with new content, with content that's exceptionally valuable to your audience, gives the visitor to your blog site, if they're the right audience, it gives them a reason to come back. In addition, it positions you as an authority in that particular field. They Your visitors see that you've got useful information. You know what you're doing. You know what you're talking about. You're always providing new and exceptionally useful information. And so there's an incentive for them to come back, to come and have a coffee with you in a virtual sense. And of course, Google loves the fact that there's new and up-to-date information there as well. So a lot of people say, I want to get to number one on Google, but they're not prepared to write content so that 
Google recognises that this website is up to date, it's consistently being updated with relevant information to the topic for which they are ranking it. So I'm reminded of the comment of Bill Ballou that I wrote about a couple of years ago in a blog post. And he said, if you want to be found online, then give people something to find. And also there's the philosophy, of course, of Marcus Sheridan, who we've had on our podcast in the past, Marcus Sheridan from the sales line. His philosophy is they ask, you answer. In fact, I'm just reading his book right now, They Ask, You Answer. Highly recommend that. It's the whole story of how Marcus rescued the uh, River Pools and Spas company with a content marketing strategy and how now he helps people all around the world build their content marketing to the point that it delivers them huge business. Just released and it's a very good read. So why do people avoid blogs? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, I, I get a sense that people are turned off by the name blog. It kind of conjures up this picture of teenagers um, complaining about their day-to-day mundane lives. Um, Some people might relate it to people touring the world or on holiday, and that's their way to document what's happening, which is not necessarily business-related. It may be, but not necessarily. There's this unconscious association of a blog with something that's got nothing to do with business. And I've got a solution for that, which... I think is to not call it a blog, give it a unique name. Now, some people have news on their websites, which is essentially their blog, or what's new. We've chosen to use the term innovation hive, which comes back to the fact that our innovation round in the podcast is the buzz. Our podcast is called the Nova Buzz based on what is the buzz around innovation. And so buzz and bees and hives seemed like a natural fit. So our blog is actually called the Innovation Hive, which when people go to the website, they might find intriguing the first time they see that. Now that's the story of blog and how you might want to get onto a blog. The key thing then is regularly producing content that's of exceptional value to your target audience. Now, I'll talk about target audience in a separate blog post. That's that's a whole podcast of in, it, in itself. But then delivering to that target audience content or information that is exceptionally valuable to them and doing that on a regular, consistent basis. That's what is going to establish that relationship, that follow-up, and eventually lead to business. Now, of course, the problem... With that is that producing content on a regular basis is time consuming. It's often not perceived as high value task in the business. So most of the time it either gets delegated to somebody who doesn't know how to do it well, doesn't know how to do it properly, doesn't necessarily have the voice of the business in terms of the consistency with the whole branding and philosophy of the business. So it's done poorly. It's done infrequently. And eventually, new content is just not produced and published at all. So that's a real problem. As I said, consistency is the key. And the idea of dropping the ball on this really is a major problem. So what are the kind of things you could put into your content plan going forward? every week. So one of the things that I like to begin with is what what are the biggest challenges of your audience and your target customer? What are the questions that you get asked most frequently? So today I'm talking about blogging because I've had several discussions this week about blogging. This is a topic that gives me content for some information that I can share with my audience. And I know this is of value because a lot of people have asked me about it this week. So there's one way to develop content for the information that you share in your blog or whatever you might call it. Okay, so I think for today, that that pretty much is what I wanted to cover. Um, So let's just summarize that. So the, the website that you have in place, you know, a static website is really like a first meeting with someone at a networking When somebody lands on the website, it's just like meeting them for the first time at a network meeting. If you're expecting that 
to lead immediately to business, then you're probably being very optimistic at best. So how do you take the person from first meeting to business? In the networking physical meeting, it's follow-up meetings, follow-up discussions, building a relationship, providing more information, making sure that your services are a match for the other person's needs and building the relationship and trust to the point where that person makes the decision to engage your services or buy your product. On the website, it's exactly the same, except of course now we don't have the physical presence and we have to do things differently because of that. Because of the distance, it's all happening online, it's all virtual. So this is where the blog becomes our key tool, where we provide exceptionally useful information to start that relationship after the person first meets you, in inverted commas, on that website. So what I want to relate back to, I mentioned right at the beginning, the five success principles of NLP that we talked about in our Facebook 9 Live series this week or this past couple of weeks. And those five success principles are knowing your outcome, taking massive action, Sensory acuity, which means knowing what's going on and what's working and what's not working. Behavioral flexibility, which is adaptable, being adaptable to um, address anything that could be working better. And then the physiology and psychology of excellence, which essentially is making sure, in this case, making sure that what you're delivering as information is exceptionally valuable and useful to your target audience. The other thing I want to emphasize again here, this is about consistency. It's about, for example, we're doing a a blog post based on our podcast every week. Every Friday, you'll see a podcast from Innovabiz of some form, and that's because consistency is really important. I'm going to be building on this information in future podcasts. So when I don't have a guest, when I do my solo podcasts, I'll be talking some more about the five success principles as it's applied to content or an information marketing strategy. I'll be talking about how do you develop that consistency? How do you get the topics and the plan in place so that doing your own information marketing strategy becomes less onerous and less intimidating? So what does all of that mean in terms of your information marketing? That's what we're going to be talking about And then we'll go on and talk about some things about building a relationship beyond your blog post, beyond the information you've put in there. And and that'll be things like email marketing, things like lead generations and things like marketing funnels, which you probably heard about and wondered what that in fact means. All of those are really ways to continue to build that relationship with the new people that have visited your website so that you can demonstrate to them that your product or your services are indeed a fit for their needs. I hope this has been valuable information for you. And if you like the podcast, then we'd certainly love you to go and visit us on iTunes or Stitcher or Pocket Cast, whatever your favourite media for consuming podcast is, and leave us a review and also tell us how we're getting on, how we're doing if there's anything you'd like us to cover or questions you want answered on a future Innova Buzz podcast, then please send them to us. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about and what you'd like us to cover in more detail than we have in the past. For today, and as always, until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from Innova Biz. Remember, if you don't innovate, you stagnate. So think big, be adventurous and keep innovating.